right, let's look at a couple of different types of machines. A real machine is kind of like real estate, stuff you can go over to and actually see and touch. Real machine is hardware. Hardware designed to accept instructions and produce a result when instructions are executed. The whole idea is it is some hardware package that has all the circuits designed so that if you apply the right voltages, you will get the appropriate response or the appropriate output. A virtual machine is different from a real machine in that it doesn't really exist. It's virtual. It's a simulation of a machine. It is made up of software that emulates or pretends to be a real machine. So it's software that emulates the functionality of a real machine. In all cases, a virtual machine or the virtual machine software takes instructions intended for a specific real machine, then translates those instructions into the instructions that the real machine he's operating on will execute. For example, take the Java environment. In Java, you now have several different choices, or a couple different choices at least. When you write Java source code, you can choose to compile that Java source code directly down to machine executables. What that means is that you would take your Java source and you would compile it to a series of machine instructions. Very machine dependent and you can only run the executable on the machine class you intended it for. So if you were to take Java code and compile it to a Windows executable, the executable that results from it would only run on a Windows machine under the Windows operating system you would not be able to take that exact same executable and run it on generic Unix boxes or Apple type of boxes. It only runs on a specific environment. On the other hand, you have the opportunity to compile Java, which is the most common implementation at this point, compiling Java down to bytecode or class files. These bytecode files are the intermediary opcode files in which they don't really compile all the way down to specific machine instructions, but they give operation codes or operation instructions. In order to execute these instructions, you need another layer of software that will translate these instructions into true machine instructions. That's where the virtual machine comes in. It is common to implement Java in this fashion so that you take your Java code, you compile it to bytecode. That bytecode then should be able to run on any machine class in the world as long as that machine is running a Java virtual machine. So that's where the virtual machine comes into play. It allows developers to write one set of software that can run on many different platforms. The only requirement, again, is that each platform must be running this virtual machine that will translate their generic bytecode software into very low-level machine instructions. And it's the virtual machine that does this translation.